So in this lesson, 4.9, we're going to be graphing and solving quadratic inequalities. I hope that you've had some uh, fun graphing parabolas. And if you haven't, here's a chance uh, to get a little bit extra fun because you're going to be coloring some. So uh, for this lesson, you're going to need some graph paper and something to color with, crayons, colored pencils, um, I don't know, eyebrow pencils and makeup, something like that. Something that's going to put some color on your graphs for you. Okay. So we're going to graph some quadratic inequalities in two variables. This is with a y-coordinate and x-coordinate. So instead of it being y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, it's y is greater than ax squared plus bx plus c. Number two, how about we graph a couple of these things together, a system of quadratic inequalities, and see where they overlap with some colors. And then finally, uh, this one's the toughest one. It doesn't seem like it, but it is. Uh, solve quadratic inequalities in one variable. And you might think, well, one variable, that should be easier than two variables. But, well, you'll see. Let's start with this little warm-up right here. Very, very simple. Just uh, refreshing our memory on how to solve or how to graph just a linear inequality in two variables. So the first one, y is greater than negative one-half x. So step one is always to graph the boundary line. So notice, of course, that this is just greater than, so it's going to get a dash line and not um, a solid line. And this one's going to go through the origin, and it has a slope of negative one-half. So I'm going to start at the origin, go down one and right two, just like that. Now I have to shade a portion. So there's a couple of ways to shade here. So first of all, I could look at this y, and it says that y's got to be greater than negative a half. The line is y. Which direction is greater than that? Up above. So I could just shade everything up above. Look at that lovely animation. It's good. It's good. Um, alternatively, I could just pick a test point. Usually I would uh, pick 0, 0. But the problem with that is that my line goes through 0, 0. So instead, I maybe I pick something like, hey, this point looks pretty good. How about 1, 0? Let's see if that makes sense. If I put 0 in here is greater than negative a half times 1, which is negative a half. 0 is bigger than negative a half, so it checks out. If it didn't check out, you would shade the opposite region, right? Okay. So look at number 2. Number two, it's in standard form for a line. And uh, I could solve this for a slope, but since both 3 and 4 go into 12, why don't we just find the x and the y-intercepts? What is the x-intercept? So if I'm trying to find the x-intercept, I cover up the y, divide by 3, and it's 4. To find the y-intercept, cover up the x, divide by negative 4, and it's negative 3. This one gets a solid line. So there are my two x-intercepts, positive 4, negative 3. Now this time I can't just use the shortcut I used over here and say that it's above the line because y is not all by itself over there. So here a test value is going to be pretty important. So let's stress out 0, 0 since it doesn't go through 0, 0. Is 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 4 times 0, which is 0, uh, less than or equal to 12. It sure is. So this means we're going to shade everything that includes the origin on that side of the line. Okay, so whenever we do these four parabolas, we're going to do the same thing. First, you're going to graph the boundary parabola, and then you're going to shade the appropriate region. So, objective one, being able to graph quadratic inequalities in two variables. What you're looking at in this little picture, it's a bridge, it's in England, and uh, the arch there forms like a parabola. And with the cables coming down, it looks like it's being shaded inside, which is why I said right down there towards the bottom that this is y is less than or equal to ace x squared plus bx plus c. That's a pretty neat picture. OK. So here's what you do whenever you're graphing quadratic inequalities in two variables. Step number one you graph the boundary parabola. Graph it just like we've done before, either finding uh, maybe if it's in standard form, 
looking at whether it's a a must a beard or a mustache finding the vertex the x intercepts or maybe you put it into intercept form or maybe you put it into vertex form all the stuff that we've done in the previous couple of lessons okay next shade the appropriate region inside or outside so look at these four cases here if i have y up front the boundary parabola is y so if it says y is greater than all of this everything that's above the parabola is greater than the line so it's shaded on the inside that's these two cases the only difference is the first one is just strictly greater than and the other one's greater than or equal to so it gets a solid line look at the other two cases over here so over here y is less than everything over there on the right side y is the parabola and less than that's going to be underneath the parabola so we're shading down below the only difference between the uh, third one and the fourth one is that this one gets a dashed line because it's not equal to okay so any point that's in that shaded region is a solution so how many answers do you get to these quadratic inequalities you're gonna get an infinite number of answers and your your answer is just gonna be whatever you color in the picture for me okay so if if it's a little confusing as to what part you should shade you can always pick a test value plug it in see if it works if it works shade that region if it doesn't shade the region that doesn't contain that point so let's try that with this example y is less than negative x squared minus 4x so um, let me put this in a form that might make this a little bit easier to graph there's only two terms here so why don't I just factor this as a negative x on the outside and uh, on the inside x plus 4 right so I've just basically put it in intercept form and my two x-intercepts are x is equal to 0 because x is all by itself and x is equal to negative 4. So those two points I would go ahead and graph those. Um, how, about, how about the vertex point? Vertex point I could get by just averaging out those two. So Let's go vertex, and x will be equal to 0 minus 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. To get the y-coordinate, stick it back into the equation. Now, don't stick it into, an e into the inequality. Stick it into an equation so you see what the boundary parabola is actually equal to. So y is equal to... I have negative, negative 2. I'm doing it in the factored form there times negative 2 plus 4. So these negatives will cancel, and this is positive 2 on the outside, so this is equal to 4. So I have negative 2, 4. So let's see if that's enough to uh, put all this together and graph it. So here's my parabola. I've got my two x-intercepts at 0 and at uh, negative 4. My vertex is at negative 2, 4, and this is the same width as the, the parent function, so you could graph it like that. Now we have to decide, step two, uh, what part of this to shade. Okay, so y is less than all of this. This is y. Less than that is going to be down below, because y is going either up or down. Less than y is going to go down below. So there's the shading on the parabola. Alternatively, you could just use a test point. Pick something that's going to be pretty easy to substitute in there. So, for example, let's try this point right here. I wouldn't try the origin because it's on the line. Maybe I try this one at negative 1, 0. So I plug 0 in for y. 0 is less than. I'm going to do it in the factored form. It's a little faster here. Negative times negative 1 times negative 1 plus 4 these will cancel out leaving me with 1 and over here times 3 is 0 less than 3 checks out so there's an alternative way to just check to see what part you got to shade so 
make your graphs look kind of pretty by shading it a, a nice handsome color like that. Okay. So here are two of them for you to practice your skills in graphing these quadratic inequalities. Give her a pause, come back and check to see if you have your answers right. Okay, let's look at the work on number one right here. So the first thing that I did, hit, did was determine that it was going to be a beard because that A up front right there is positive. It's going to be dash because there's no equal sign. And since Y is greater than all of this, it's going to be shaded up above. So just have that in mind whenever I go to find all the parts about it. Okay, I decided to put this thing in vertex form. Maybe you did something different just by completing the square. This one was easy to put in that form because uh, I didn't have a leading coefficient and I had an even middle term, which meant the vertex is at negative 1, negative 9. And uh, then I could just do SRT transformations, which just ends up being go left 1, go down 9 on the parent function. Like I said, this is going to be a dashed parabola and it's going to be shaded up because it's greater than. So let's take a look at all of those things put together on the picture. Just a second. Uh, so that was a very important call about my preferred flavor of Gatorade. It's lemon lime in case you were wondering. Okay, so let's put all that stuff together with the graph. Voila. Uh, vertex negative 1, negative 9. It's the parent function opening upwards. It's dashed. What direction are we shading this in? Greater than means we're shading it up above. Okay. So now let's look at the work for number two. First thing that I did actually is I switched directions with this thing so that it, it looks like how we were used to doing them. First the Y, less than all this, and then it clues my brain into going, oh, I'm going to be shading, shading that downwards. You can see right there, I've made a little thumbnail sketch that this thing is going to open upwards. It is going to be um, a beard. It's going to be solid and it's shaded downwards. So I decided on this one since it was just in standard form, um, didn't know if it was factorable just yet, so I just found the vertex, negative b over 2a, it's 3 fourths, stuck it back in, and you got the y coordinate, lovely, right? You want to graph that thing? Sure. So I did go ahead and factor it so I could find my x-intercepts, get a couple extra points, and then I got x equals a half and 1, those things are really super close to each other. So there's the x-intercepts, and of course my y-intercept is at 0, 1. This one's a solid parabola. It's being shaded down. Let's take a look at that. So all those pieces put together, you can see my x-intercepts at a half and at 1. And this teeny, teeny, right below the y-x-axis, you have your vertex, and then you have your 1 and reflected across. Which direction is this going in? Well, we said back over there that we're shading this, which way? Down below it, that's right, shading it down below. If I look at it in this direction as I have it originally type, the Y is smaller, so we want smaller than the Y going downwards. So that concludes the first objective, graphing quadratic inequalities with two variables. You're first going to graph the boundary parabola, solid, maybe it's dashed and then figure out what part of it you're going to shade, either up above or down below. Alright, see you in part two.